Hello, welcome to Infinity. Uh, let's have a look at the Refine tool. It's a very, very useful tool. I use a great deal. Uh, and it's for when we're making a selection, it's about tidying up the edges. So if you want to select all these funny things around the edge here of this hat, um, which is not too bad um, when we're going to use it, but uh, if you try to do that by clicking around those with the individual freehand tool, it will be terrible. Um, also, it's going to we're going to have a go at this down here. We've got dark against dark, and the edges here. This is a lot trickier. Let's see how Affinity handles this. Um, Photoshop does have a similar tool, but Affinity tool I just really really like. So. Um, if we click on the selection tool, when we're going to start off, we're going to select this. So let's start off down here. Well, I'll just paint this uh, bottom bit. Uh, it's kind of force it up to here. Notice the way, if it doesn't really know where the edge is, is it'll just kind of let you tell it. Um, then we go up here, and when we're painting this, we want to make sure we get most of the hair and things because um, the refine tool is a about refining it's about sorting out those final few edges it's not about doing you know large scale selections for you so here it is overall that's probably about okay little bits like that then we'll let affinity sort out these edges around here to do a refine there's two ways we can do it from here and a number of the, ref the selection tools let you do this one is the refine button on the toolbar here. And if it's not there, if you've gone elsewhere, for example, we still want to do a, a refine, then you go to select and refine edges, exactly the same thing, or even hit control alt R. And now what happens is we get this uh, picture here, which is uh, the red background, which is just like the quick mask, very, very similar. And uh, then we've got the, uh, the uh, the panel here which tells us how we will do all this so let's have a quick look through these and we'll go into more detail later so up here it tells us how to appear overlays this red background these control the selection which we'll look at these in a bit these are the main bits we're going to play with first which is what to do when we're brushing and this will come to at the end so first of all with the mat selected. Mat's kind of a funny word. I've never quite figured out what that totally means. But uh, for this, it means make the, uh, we're gonna paint around the edges um, over the bits where here we say this is selected, these bits aren't. So we're gonna make the brush about right to cover it all. Um, and using a left and right square bracket, but you can use the little slides down there and um, we paint over the edges of this. A good idea to, when doing this is just to do sort of like a chunk at a time and let it figure it out. There it is. If you uh, try to do everything at once, it can get a little bit confused, but we just paint over everything there. Look at the way this does this ping. The arch, look, it's figured out all those here. Look at that. Imagine how long that would take manually. This is trickier down here. What can you do about this? Oh, it's having a go, isn't it? Look at that. Then down here, there's the bit there. No, this is might need a little bit more up here. Please, there we go. See, it's having a go at getting that up there. You can do some more work on this later. And uh, then you can sort of like, there's a bit that's not quite sure on the corner there. Uh, oh, that's even messier. But let's have a look at this differently. If we come back to this now, let's have a look at how these things work up here, starting with this. And well, let's click on the black mat. And there we go. We've shown it now on the black background. This is great for looking at things like this, where you've got white and light colors, because it shows these great. So blonde hair, for example, might look great here, but we've got darker hair. So it's very difficult to see the edges of that. But if we click on the white mat, now we can see down here. This is a lot clearer where the edges are here. These still work here, so I can still paint. Can you have another go doing that, please? See what it does. Uh, and uh, sometimes you have to go back in. Uh, let's go down here. So now we're going to go here. Let's say foreground. That says 
No, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you this is foreground here. See the way it's now picking this up a lot more strongly? Because before it made it a bit transparent. If it's not sure, it does some transparent stuff. And ooh, it's, you know, it's, that's okay. It's not too bad there. Uh, and so on down here. If you've got some background coming out, and if we will show you here, if we go up to here and go to black and white, here we've got the whole thing like this. So if I say, I'm going to do a bit of foreground down here, just to tidy up that edge, for example. Um, what you get sometimes, oh, look at this, see, it's all fuzzed out here, because it's got a bit confused, because I've painted out into the background. So I go, no, 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 no. This bit here is background. We don't want that selected. So, so you can figure that one out. Anyway, I'll see that forces that in. But now it's gone a bit into here. So sometimes you go, go kind of to and fro a bit. And in the end, you might have to give up and do it manually later with typically the quick mask. So, so these here are all quite useful. You can even go to transparent and just see it on a background here without anything else selected. So let's just go back to the overlay. Overlay is handy because you can see the background, not that there's much background on this image because it's rather dark. Then what we can we do with these things here? So these, the border width just makes the selection area bigger. It says have a look at this and see it's saying select here, but of course it's going to do refine the moment I let go, so it's going to rethink again and it ends up going back in a bit so this is something you can try starting you know when you start off see whether it will just do that so you no need to just paint if you don't paint around the edges with the mat you could just have a go with just the border with saying rethink with a bigger border smooth it is when you've got a um, something that is you want a smooth edge with this so let's have a look at what happens if I turn up the smooth on this? Uh, you can't see much here, but if you go to say to the black mat, and now you can see, look, it's really sort of like smudged the edge of this. Smoothie is not good when you've got hairy edges. You want to go back to something like that. Feathering will um, increase the, the transparency of things. So it basically says taper this off a little bit, which is very useful if you're going to put it on top of another image so that they fade fades into that often all you need is literally a few pixels very seldom do you need a big one up there normally um, if you're going to do other things like put it back into the same image then you know you may not need feathering either but i usually put a little bit in um, ramping here again change the size of the selection um, so this makes you can go backwards here you can make go backwards so this literally forces the selection to be bigger and forces it to be smaller, as opposed to the border width says, rethink around this, please. So if I force this down a little bit, this is, you know, is typical that you might want to push it down is if around here, you've got a bit of the background in the edges and you'll see it with like a kind of halo um, in uh, areas. So for example, if I put this onto the white background, Sometimes around here you might see a little bit of dark edge because it's over selected um, with this, in which case a little bit of negative ramp can help you out. Um, well, we didn't mention the feather brush down here, which is very similar to this up here, but it just lets you paint in a bit. So if I take the feather here and say, I'm just going to paint in a bit here, then it'll have a go at improving that. Uh, see, it's made, it's actually ended up a little bit faded i can always do an undo on any of these steps and say no go back a step please right and outputting i can output to a selection which is fine i can do things from that or i can go directly and just force it into a mask i can chuck it onto a new layer or i can even chuck it on a new layer and stick a mask around it so i can that's useful if you might want to have another play with it later just for now i'll just say put in a new layer and apply uh, it's easy with this, by the way, to go off and start doing other things and forget to do apply. Do apply or you'll lose what you've just selected if you're not careful. So look at that, what's happened here. It's put it onto a new layer here. Um, and it's turned off the layer that was on underneath, which is why the background's disappeared. Let's turn that back on again. 
because what we can do is we can now start playing around with this. If I click on adjustments, select curves and bring up the curves dialog here, then for example, I can just pull up the background. I can see a bit more of the background if I want to do that. I can make the background all white. I can make the background all black. So we'll just leave it and say there for the moment for whatever you want to do with it, because that is about it. Um, the refine tool, very, very, very useful. Typically what I do in, in when I do a lot of selecting, I'll start with the selection brush. I'll do a refine. Uh, I might do a bit of quick mask in between those, and I might do a bit of quick mask afterwards, which lets you paint directly on. So definitely do this and definitely do that. So there we go. Hope you found that useful. This is really great tool. Thanks for watching.